Okay, hello everybody. I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Um, today we're going to do an oil painting, uh, and uh, it's going to be kind of fun. I'm kind of using some artistic license with this. I've had a photograph up for a while from a, a photographer named Cheryl Seward, who uh, made this photo available on Photos for Artists uh, in my Facebook Facebook page, and. Uh, it's from Carmel by the Sea, which is in California. If you haven't heard of that, um, you can uh, kind of Google Carmel by the Sea and you'll see hundreds and hundreds of images of beautiful scenery, a lot of uh, seascapes uh, that are worthy of painting, uh, rocks and surf and that sort of thing. So uh, Cheryl uh, put in this photograph that had a nice surf in it, but it didn't have a lot of background. It didn't have a lot of depth. So I've taken some other photos that I saw on uh, on uh, photo, uh, not photos for artists, just looking at images on Google, and uh, so I made a little composition. You can see the sketch that I had there. Um, the sketch. I'm not even going to go to my computer today. I think it's uh, kind of a waste of time. So we'll just get going on this. But I do have the uh, the sketch up here. Um, maybe I can show it to you here. See if that's viewable. So I just sort of made an ink pen and ink or graphite and ink sketch of what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some background in this, put some rocks behind it, pretty high uh, uh, line for the, uh, the the distance there, the horizon line, and then I'm going to put some rocks in front. I actually found a nice photo on uh, on Google that had a scene similar to this, didn't have as much surf, but it has some nice rocks in the foreground. So this is all taken from that area, Carmel by the Sea and the surrounding, surrounding area. So, Anyway, I'll use that as a, uh, a guide, and uh, I think we'll just get going. I'm going to uh, show you my palette here, and uh, we'll uh, don't have to spend a lot of time. I've shown you this before. The palette's all labeled with my titanium white around to my bright red, my ultraviolet. These are all Bob Ross colors. Um, I have a little bit of liquid white here that I'll use to do some background painting, and uh, I have my set of Bob Ross brushes. I also have a set of some Trakel brushes that I'll probably use, and uh, I think that's all I want to say. Was just get going on this thing, and uh, see how we do. Let me uh, put my palette back down where it belongs. I want to zoom in my camera here and move it over slightly to uh, make it so y'all can see. I'm talking like a Florida now, y'all. Okay, there we go. So. Uh, you can see the sketch a little bit. I have it on the canvas. This is 11 by 14 canvas, and I have the sketch on there in uh, in uh, white pencil. Really, it's a it's called charcoal white. Um, I buy these from General, um, and so having my gray gesso canvas and then the white charcoal gives me a nice uh, sketch I can use to to paint from. So. I probably told you that before as well. So uh, let's get going, and uh, I'm going to start here with my uh, some liquid white. I'm just going to use this big old uh, this number number 16 uh, brush that I have here from uh, Turkel, and uh, I'm not going to put a lot of a lot of uh, liquid white on here, mostly in the, the sky area, and. Uh, I don't really expect to copy this painting exactly, uh, or the photograph exactly. I'm going to put some uh, interesting uh, background in it. This particular photograph didn't have much background at all, so to speak. So uh, we'll just layer this in and get it on. Um, I'm going to need some more whites in here, and when I start putting in the the, the, the surf and the, and the foreground, so I'll layer in a little bit of this here and just get that on the canvas. I uh, I do this liquid white sparingly just so I can keep track of specific objects I want to paint, um, particularly when I have a, uh, a scene that I've, I've made the composition out of that I uh, haven't painted before. As most of you know, most of my paintings I, I haven't painted before. Um, I just uh, do them in front of you for the first time, and that's the case with this one. I have not painted this before, um, so we're going to just get going. Okay, got some liquid white. <clears throat> Apologize for my voice again. I've been struggling with sinus problems, and 
difficulties with breathing and everything else for quite a while, so I'm finally starting to feel a little better, but it doesn't help when I have to sneeze or cough and carry on in front of you guys, so I hope I don't have too many problems here. I just put a little bit of Prussian blue together with a little bit of Midnight Black, and uh, I'm just going to put in a, a light sky. It's a little bluer than what was in the photograph, um, but I just want to, uh, this is all wet and wet again. Uh, We'll just blend it together here, try to give a little change of color to it. I'm going to put just a touch of alizarin down here toward the horizon uh, so you can kind of see the, the horizon and you can see some of the, the color come through there as I bring this gradation of the sky down. Uh, let's come back and put in a few more things here that look like there might be some, I don't know if there's storm clouds, but just something that's making the uh, the wind blow that's causing the surf to, to rise and uh, give us uh, <clears throat> some idea that there's more out there than just a calm, sunny day. Okay, so that's that. Let me see what that looks like from the... I have a monitor behind me, and uh, so I'm going to uh, try to make one side a little darker than the other. That liquid white comes through and just uh, really <clears throat> takes over. Sometimes you got to put more paint on, usually, to... Uh, See the blue there. I want to make sure you see the blue because I, there is some sun out there um, that's going to be reflecting in this wave down here. So uh, I don't want to lose my amounts of sky that would be blue out here. A little more alizarin maybe in this area. Don't have to do much more with the sky than that. Just put in a little bit. I don't even know if you can see that alizarin. It's really, really, really light. It's a little darker. I think I have to paint it a little darker sometimes just to uh, so you can see it on the camera better. Uh, so okay, so I've left some little peak hole there that looks like there might be some clouds back in there, uh, some lighter clouds. Might be a spot of sunlight back there that's coming through, and I could probably accentuate that a little bit by picking up a little more liquid white, putting in something back here like this. Gives me a nice little set of clouds with some dark, dark uh, shadows on the bottom. I'm just ad libbing here, folks. This isn't even in the isn't in the photograph at all. I'm just sort of uh, putting in what I feel like I want. So it, if you have some heavy surf and some wind blowing in, you usually have something that's making clouds out there in the, in the far distance. Okay, that's that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to uh, wipe out my brush and start moving down now a little bit into the, into the uh, water area here. And this, I'm going to start mixing some green and my phthalo blue, see if I can get a interesting color here that uh, would be a good distant color back there. It's a little bit too green. Thalo blue, at least the Bob Ross Thalo blue, has some green in it already. Um, so, um, it's a little too green still. Usually Thalo blue just takes over anything you put it in. And, uh, but sap greens are pretty heavy color as well and okay here we go okay so pick up a little bit of white lighten that phthalo blue up a little bit 
I'm moving it forward. Got some white in my brush. And uh, kind of double loaded the brush a little bit so that it brings in these interesting. I got some rocks back here I'm putting in. Paint around those. Come this way, come forward. Start moving forward a little bit. And need more phthalo. Still using this big old 16 inch filbert, or not 16 inch, <laughs> number 16 filbert. And uh, just carrying on with it here. And uh, might remind you if anybody has any questions or comments, you can type them in your chat window there. I've got a computer up here by my left elbow and I can see what you're typing and maybe respond to you if I don't forget to look which is one thing I have to remember. Put just a little bit of white out there in the middle to kind of indicate we've got some light hitting on this water. I'm just kind of putting in this under layer right now. I don't have to make this perfectly look like a perfect sea out there. I've got some white. I'm going to have some ripples coming in. This is all uh, wet on dry. There's no uh, nothing on the canvas underneath this. This is just pure paint, almost paint right out of the tube with phthalo blue and uh, putting it right there on the canvas. I'm going to darken it down in some areas over here where there might be a little more shadow from these mountains over here on the right side. Use a little black <clears throat> mix in there with it and uh, a little bit darker values. So I'm getting some change of value as we go across the canvas here. A little bit over here in some areas. So it's just one big kind of bland set of blue out here. Coming down into some rocks over here, which I'm going to lay in. A big rock on the left. So I'm changing this color. I've got different colors in there. I got to even put a little bit of Prussian blue in there in some areas to uh, change the color up a little bit so that it's not all the same color. But. Um, Okay, I'll just throw some of this in and get it uh, get it out there. Okay, I'm going to make sure I cover the canvas. I don't want the gray canvas showing through. Um, I think I'm going to make it maybe a little darker even over here on the right side. In some areas, I want it to give a good distinction. Just putting in a little black, that's all it is. Putting in some Okay, so now that's a, uh, almost looks like a smooth ocean, but you know it's not. It's going to have stuff going on. I'm going to uh, change up my brush here. And uh, <clears throat> pick up my uh, little fan brush. I'm going to start with a fan brush with some white on it, titanium white. And uh, maybe just a little of that blue, not much. I'm going to come back and start painting in these areas in the distance where I want to have some things showing that we've got some water going out there. You see that? I just touched the bottom 
of this fan brush on the canvas and it lifts those nice little interesting marks, brush strokes, that look like tops of waves coming over. I didn't draw those tops of waves, I just touched it. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little more like a, a bit of a rough sea out there. Something coming in. So it, it makes sense that we're going to have a, a good size wave surf here coming in. And, and the, the blue picks up in the bottom of this brush and as you push down it takes the paint off of further up in the brush. So that gives me this, it's like a double loading. All I did was just swipe it across there and let the white come off from below there and it made a nice little wave and I didn't have to spend a lot of time gyrations trying to make that wave. It's, it's uh, a nice, very nice optical illusion. wave here, sort of a, like this. Okay, um, try just touch more of that in this area over here on the right. I've got just a little blue in it so it's not totally, totally white. Okay, so I've got some cool things going on out there. This always starts pulling up from the back as this wave starts to build the back side. We have these brush strokes that kind of want to point it that way. All right. Um, a little more in here. We're going to get some. We're going to get some of this foam and other stuff going on up here. That's uh, probably a little premature to start putting too much in here right now. But I, uh, I want to just remember to uh, start putting in some of the top of that wave. Now this wave we have to paint. We're not going to be able to uh, just use a double brush stroke, a double loaded brush stroke, but. Uh, it's uh, gonna be fun when we get there. I'm gonna go back now and work on some of those uh, those mountains in the background back there. Um, didn't finish that off back there, so uh, let's go back and do that. I don't see anything in the chat window. Is it still working? I guess I could. Uh, Say something and maybe looks like it's working. I just typed in hi. So, all right, um, let's go back and see if we can get some uh, some of these mountains in back here. <clears throat> and what am I going to use for that? I'm going to think I was going to use my my knife, my palette knife, and I'm going to get something that's sort of reddish brown in the distance using dark sienna and a little bit of uh, alizarin and some white lighten it up let's see if this is going to work back here it's really too white too red actually but uh, we can always darken it down uh, add a little more brown in there Okay, so I'm just using this standard number five palette knife. Thanks, Lindy. Appreciate the feedback. I sometimes think I'm talking to nobody here when I don't see a thing in the chat window once in a while. And you are one of my favorite chatters. 
be giving me feedback. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm keeping the lot, top of it a little redder than the bottom. I'll come down here and put in a sort of a base. I want to put some more dark, a little darker in the bottom of this down here. And uh, that run up like that. Um, we've got a couple of rocks here that just sort of jut out of the ground, out of the water. I'm just going to use the side tip of this. I'll put those in there like that. And I'm going to have one right beside it that's kind of getting some of the surf. This guy here is getting some of the surf bouncing off of him. And uh, very simple. I'm going to come back and now use some of my white with my fan brush and put a little more surf around that. But I don't want to mess this up too much. If I keep going back in there, I'm going to ruin it. And you've heard me talk about ruining my paintings before. It's kind of easy to do. Um, I'm going to pick up a little Indian yellow and mix it with this Van Dyke brown. Get a little bit more of an orange color here. Something like that. Put some more dark black. I want to make sure I distinguish these two surfaces back there. This one has to have a dark edge on it so it, it stands out. It should be darker. It comes forward. So I'm going to kind of load it up with dark paint, almost black. It is black actually. Van Dyke Brown. And then I'm just painting with whatever's on my knife here. I'm not even reloading my knife entirely. I'm just sort of using whatever's there. Okay. Pick up a little bit of light here to lighten this up just a little. I want to see if it, what it looks like there. Okay, there's some good variation right there. Um, that, that lighter color should could be on top. Um, but I just may make it like a third layer here. Since I'm not painting an actual photograph, I'm uh, just ad-libbing this whole thing. Okay, so we'll do that. I'm going to come back and just touch in a little bit of black. I finally wiped my knife off. No more midnight black. Let's see if we can put a little bit in here. Just to show there's some dark, those rocks as they touch the, the ocean or the water there, they get looking very dirty and black usually. So let's just put a couple out there like that. All right, I think that's about rough enough. Um, put a couple of marks in there so it doesn't look like it's. And up here in this other area, this other rock, I'm going to put a couple of of things like that so it looks like we have until they sort of drop down like that okay so that's enough for my distant mountains um, I have another one here while I got this this uh, paint going on the knife I think I'm going to just go ahead and work him in he's going to have to be darker more blue more gray um, more brown, throw in some different colors. I'm just mixing a whole bunch of stuff here on the knife right now. We're going to come in here and hopefully put in a a big rock here in the foreground. It's really, I'm putting in the light values first. We'll come back over it and put in some dark values to paint in the uh, valleys. So this just needs to come down and it's going to hit the water down here and have some really dark base on it down here like this. It's going to get some surf floating over it as well. So we'll just kind of cap it off like that. 
and uh, come back and let's get some black and alizarin here and see what we can do with some interesting colors. Um, these rocks can have all kind of colors in them and you don't have to paint them exactly as you see them. Uh, All right, we're going to work on these rocks down here with the brush, so we'll be able to put some some nice highlights and stuff on them. Uh, I'm going to put, well, I've got my knife here. I'm going to pick up a little light highlight here and put it on the top of this rock that we're looking at right here and see if that helps. Didn't be much of a highlight. There we go. Okay, something like that. I want to kind of match this these highlights on the other side a little bit to show there's some there is some light flowing in here, and it's hitting on the tops of some of these rocks. <coughs> it's almost too much, but you can always pull that down. Okay. All right. We're getting down toward the, the big surf here. How have we been doing? 24 minutes. Okay. A little more than 24, actually, probably. Okay. Now this uh, this um, big wave here, the surf, is coming in. Um, when I paint these kind of waves, I like to use the, the brush in a use it in the, this way to come on the top, over the top, <coughs> coming underneath. I use it like in a letter C coming back this way. So all of these brush strokes on the left side are going to be sort of in a letter C because they're going to be the water is going to be flowing that way. The, the ones on the top are going to be flowing over the top, so I use the brush strokes that way. That's just a uh, little bit of a tip on what I'm doing and why. I'm trying to get a teal color here. Uh, this sort of this uh, this color that was inside this wave was a nice uh, blue green, really light. So I used this paint here that I had my. Uh, the back of my ocean surf and uh, by using sap green, phthalo blue and put some white in it I'm able to almost find this color that we had there and this is I think indicative of some of the, the colors that you see in uh, in Carmel this uh, blue turquoise type color different times of the day it's it's like that um, I've seen so many photos that have uh, have different colors of the surf in Carmel that uh, you never know what color to paint them. But um, I'm going to just kind of fill this in, kind of make it all go this way since that's the way this uh, part of the surf is going. The eye, we want to leave room for the eye here. I'm going to come back and use a use my uh, uh, one of my filberts and see if I can work on that eye a little bit and we don't want to forget there is you know the ocean does have green in it and the, the water does have green touches to it so I'm going to put some of that in Come over here very close to these. I'm gonna actually I think I'm gonna hit this rock on the left with some splashes. Uh, but let's put it in this way and uh, pick up a few more darks and throw in just a few dark movements here that kind of show you the way that wave is moving. For now, I can come back and do more on that if I want. This is going to be a little darker. I want to have this just, since this is underneath, I want this to be a little darker. And uh, I want it to fade out into the white more. So I'll pick up more white and let it blend as it, as it comes away. See, that's all part of making it look three-dimensional. 
I have a lot of surf, a lot of white surf on top of this over here on the right. And uh, so I'm just going to push it out that way, pick up a few more darks, pull in here in some areas. Still using this fan brush. Okay. Kind of sticking with this phthalo blue as the sort of the base home color, if you will. That uh, I'm pushing into here. This is all pretty much ad lib here. I'm not uh, don't have much to to work from because uh, I have deviated from the photograph pretty significantly. Although the the wave itself, I'm I'm uh, sticking with it. So this is going to have a little bit different colors in it. Just because I pulled that brown in, I got some more gray. This has the liquid liquid white underneath it, so uh, it's it's uh, going on much smoother. And uh, leave room for some rocks, so I can make that more turbulent, which I tend to do. Um, let's put just a few streaks in here of some dark. I want this to be very light up there. Um, I think that yellow is too bright there on the left hand side. It's pulling my eye over there, so I'm going to probably fix that if I don't forget. Um, get my other smaller filbert brush and uh, let me get some of this white and see if I can paint the eye of this guy here. going in circular motions. This has a lot more distinct eye than is in the photograph. Okay. Take that out. Clean that out. Pick up a little more white and it's Start on the top here. I want to put a little more white back in here. I need some more. I've got too much blue in there. I need it to be a little bit whiter. And I'm letting these little bits of paint, white paint, come off my brush and uh, just sort of leaving them there if I can. Leave them alone. These are kind of pushing up. Come back and well, I got this brush. This is bothering me, so I'm gonna 
See if I can fix it a little bit without. Oh, that's still lighter, but it's not a bold yellow sticking out there that's pulling my eye. Every time I look at it, I got it's pulling my eye. So I figured I better fix it. Okay, so let's see how we're doing on this. Get this brush cleaned out a little bit or <clears throat> some more white in here and see if I can put in just a little more turbulence around this eye. Over here we got some stuff coming down, some stuff going up because the wind is kind of blowing from our left. So I want to make that indication by just pushing up, which is kind of what I started to do here. This is sort of this. So you can kind of get a feel that the wind is pushing us pushing this wave in. At least that's the, that's the idea of this sort of dry brush type painting here. All right, let's come down here and put some more in. Let's get the canvas covered a little bit and then we'll come and put some highlights on it. This canvas, covering the canvas is just going to kind of gray it down a little bit. I just don't want it to be all one color. Okay, so now you're seeing turbulence. Hopefully. It's the idea. And hopefully you can see there's a somewhat distinct eye going on in this in this wave. So a lot of titanium with just a little bit of light blue in it, not much. That blue just takes it away, it takes all the color out and puts side of the brush. See how I did that? I just used the flat side of this brush with the whatever blue was in it and uh, like this. It's really kind of crashing in down here on the bottom. And uh, I got some trailer stringing over there. Over here, we're Okay, so I got a pretty good potent wave there. Looks like it's hitting. I'm going to put a little bit of a blue and dark in the base down here, which is going to help accentuate this sort of crashing that's going on. I'm just using a little bit of that phthalo blue and pushing up in there in some areas. Over here, I want some. So I want it to look like this is getting pulled up because that's what happens. It gets it's pulled up and then curves over and comes back crashing around. So these brush strokes need to go up that way, like in a letter C if you're coming down or a backward letter C if you're going up. Um, I want more turbulence down here. 
because there's a lot going on. Almost pure white in some of these areas. It's pushing out everywhere. Picked up some dark. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Put in some of this background and then we'll come back and we'll work on these rocks for a little while. I've got uh, I've been going about 38 minutes, so that's not terrible. Need to stop and step back and look at this and see if I've got some more to do on it. I think I do, but uh, right now I want to just hold that for a minute and uh, take a step back and see what this looks like from a distance. I'm up too close. Okay. <clears throat> looks like I've got a issue here. It looks like it's too light right there. I need to connect it to this darker color. So I'm going to come back and pick up a little more of this teal blue color. See if I can kind of connect it in here in some ways that make it look like it's more part of that wave. It looked like it was disconnected when I stepped back from it. So I want this to be connected all the way down here so that it looks like it's you see, by putting that little shading in, just that little bit of shading, value change, it connected this shadow here with some of the shadow that's there. There needs to be some shadow under that because we do have surf over the top of it and it's, it is leaving a shadow. So it's a good thing I took a little step back. It's all shadow under here in some areas. Okay, um, let me put in just a little more of this, uh, this color I had here, lost track of it in this area. Put in just a few more brush strokes, kind of fill out this canvas here. Um, a little darker maybe on this side. Still have some canvas sticking through, but I can kind of come over and, and uh, fix that uh, later. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of rocks down here in the bottom. I'm going to get my uh, one of my brushes, my uh, <coughs> Trakel brushes. <coughs> We're going to start working on some. That was uh, some of these rocks. The other thing I was concerned about that existing beginning photo was that it it really just had. Uh, pretty bland foreground if you noticed it was just a uh, just a pile of rocks right across the front of the front of the canvas and it basically blocked you off so if I put rocks all the way across here I kind of blocked you from getting to the painting so consciously I've made these rocks here with an opening so your eye can kind of go in here up that way look at the center go up here and around I'm trying to keep the eye in the painting so the way we do that is to give ourselves <clears throat> path for the eye to follow. And uh, so some of these rocks here in the middle are going to be, that's uh, definitely gray, but it's not dark enough. So let's put a few round rocks in here. Another one over here. Change the color. I'm just going to go for my browns my blacks like this. Throw a little blue in there maybe to darken it down. Get some dark. And uh, so I may paint on this for a little while, but uh, there's some green in here in some areas. Um, and uh, so I'm going to just kind of paint in underneath some of these rocks where it's darker. A big rock over on that side. OK. 
Okay. Black and brown together. Let's put them in like this. I'm just putting in sort of the base color on these rocks right now, and I'm going to come back and put a highlight on the top and put a little darker value on the bottom. So I can make a little bit of this orange color in there if I can find a little orange. Sort of like to echo some of the color that's up there. So it looks like these are all part of the same painting since we don't have uh, the composition needs to have balance, it needs to have harmony. Okay, uh, I've got a couple of rocks <clears throat> that are kind of sitting out in here and look like they're in space, uh, but we're going to cover them with foam and attach them to the water. So let's come over here now and see what we got to work with over here. Let's put in a, kind of a good size rock right here. Smaller ones around it. <clears throat> Uh, this may look like one big blob of rock to you, and uh, we'll come back and we'll separate them out with some highlights and low lights, <laughs> shadows. Pick up a little alizarin in some of these. We want to tie that into the color we got up there in the upper corner over here. We have some alizarin. When I put a highlight on it, it's going to kind of match what's up there. And uh, maybe a little more of this yellowish brown over here. And uh, let's get a big, big one in this corner over here. Don't want it to look like the rock in the other corner. I want it to look like something different. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of rocks. I want to put a couple little ones <clears throat> out here in the water as well, so that we have something to uh, don't want them all to be the same size. Let's change it up so we have different size rocks out there. Okay. Variation is the name of this game. You got to change everything you can think of, highlight, so forth. Okay, now I need to get a little more of this um, base color here, this uh, ocean water color. In here, I kind of left that out in that area. Put a little more in there. To have some more foam on it. It could be whiter. Okay. All right, now let's go finish these rocks off and we'll be pretty well finished. Uh, I may want to touch up a little more of that, uh, the foam up there, but uh, I'm going to take some really dark <clears throat> black Prussian, blue, black, and Van Dyke. <clears throat> I'm going to make my dark shadow color on these rocks. We're going to come in here and put in something that looks like a shadow on the bottom of this rock. Put another one on this rock over here. I don't know if you can see that that well, but that's the idea is to get rocks sort of separated by darker values. It may need me to put the highlights on before you can actually see the separation that well. So let's put a little highlight on and 
see if I'm doing it right. <clears throat> Highlight's going to have some white in it, a little bit of this blue, a little bit of gray. And um, just come in here and put a little highlight like that. Wipe the brush out, go back and get some more paint. I'm just sort of blending it, pulling it down, letting it go from light to dark. This is sort of a bluish white color. This one down here has got a little highlight on top. So I'm taking this big blob of different color and sort of identifying what's in there for you. So you can see now, these rocks are rounded too. Many times rocks, you want to make them angular. Typically a rock is angular, at least in some of the mountain areas where I travel. Um, they're angular because they're made from granite or whatever, but when they're laying in the ocean like this for centuries and they've been beat on and pounded on by the surf, they get all curved and rounded, so by making these rounded, we're making them more realistic and uh, more accurate, I would say. These, I'm going to have to put just a tad of that darker blue at the bottom to kind of work them into the, the water. I don't, want the, I don't want them to look like they've been stuck on, you know, like glued on or whatever. I want them to blend in with the water. Okay, so that's those rocks. Um, over here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a dark base on them. Christella, hello from France. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. We're getting about finished here. In the next 10 minutes or so, maybe a little more. Some dark bases on these, and we will all right, so. enough there. Okay, let's come back now and we'll see if we can put some highlights on top and uh, define that a little better. Take some more of my white, titanium white with just a touch of blue in it and put a little highlight on these. It's got to be lighter than what's behind it or you won't see it. I say that all the time. You probably get tired of me saying that. Okay, that looks like I've got a lot of different types of uh, rocks in there. Some rounded, a little bit angular in some spots. These I want to glue into the base of the painting down here. So they're not just hanging out up there by themselves. Put a little more blue in here to sort of build them together. Okay, now let's step back and look at that. What does it need? Getting very close to being finished here. I think I could use just a little more. I'm going to get my little fan brush out here and see if I can finish up a few things that uh, might improve it just a little. Um, get some paint on there. I don't have enough paint. There we go. 
again this is not pure titanium it's got a little bit of a little bit of color in it a little bit of the blue or gray but I want this to actually come down more in a cascade type of like it would if it were really rolling over here it's going to come in a more like this more like it was over a waterfall or something okay now you're starting to see more of that back here we'll put just a few more streaks that look like we're pulling up <coughs> over here let's see and there's a lot of turbulence this has a lot of foam and stuff in it the thing I noticed in the photograph that I saw was there were some of these rocks had little uh, things of water coming over them like that they'd been uh, the waters as it's coming in it's kind of hitting and rolling over again this is sort of like a waterfall might have it. and you could actually make that come come in a little further if you want I, if it's coming over like this it needs to be a a splashed down here in some areas like that and you could actually have it even coming up here a little bit more on these other rocks if we want um, I was going to put some more in this rock up here take the side of this brush and sort of give it a little bit of a so it looks like it's uh, getting its the water's hitting it and pushing it up need more white I just took all the white out of that and made it gray there we go something like that that should be connected to this. Like that. Over here, we want these to still go off to the right a little bit more. And I think I'm going to call a halt to this right about now. I'm going to put in some more, just some. think let me put just a little bit down here show some more turbulence some of this turbulence is kind of coming in here and don't want it to totally look like it's a calm area because it's not it's really getting pushed around I could probably mess around with this for quite a while longer but I don't want to belabor the point but you see what I'm doing how I'm doing it with this brush just very light touches uh, almost nothing to make it come over over the top and I think that's uh, whoops what I want to show you there um, so this is uh, Carmel by the sea surf um, and uh, could put a f eh, I don't know I don't want to mess around I, I would put in a few uh, these stragglers these things that kind of go up into the into the uh, wave itself I got a few things there that sort of look like it but there's always these things that uh, kind of go up in there and don't even have enough paint on my brush to do it but uh, dark but there's always these kind of crazy things going on that not necessarily paintable but they're just little shadows of things that are showing the, the, the turbulence of the of the water and of that surf so you need a you don't need a uh, firm hand with that you need a shaky hand say they don't so I'm just doing a few of these little stringer like things that wouldn't come out it's probably enough just to add a little more interest to it so I think, I think maybe
maybe I'm going to stop here, put in a little signature, if I can get a, enough wet paint on my brush. And right in here, we're going to... All right. Okay. Okay, folks, there you are. There's the uh, little surf at uh, Carmel by the Sea that's been modified, a little artistic license. And uh, so uh, I think it's always good to do that if you can take a photograph and make a little better composition. Um, so that's all I want to show you today. Uh, that's my demo in oils. And uh, I'll uh, try to be back with you next week for a demonstration of watercolor on Wednesday. And uh, so check out my Facebook page, check out my uh, website. Uh, the sketches for this, such as it is, it's really going to be this uh, uh, ink sketch up here is going to be on the website for the sketch. So it's not a sketch like the photograph, but it's a sketch more like the painting. So uh, hopefully you can pick that up and give it a try. And uh, so I hope you liked it. Uh, check out my uh, Patreon site if you want to give me a little support. I'd appreciate it. And uh, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye. <laughs>